Welcome to another episode of Science Made Simple. I'm Farhan and I'm a science specialist here at the Peak Lab. In this video, I'll be analyzing a past year examination question from the topic of separation techniques. I placed the question in a handout and you may download it for free by clicking on the link in the description box below. So let's begin. Question 1. The diagram below shows a chromatogram of four dyes E to H. What is a chromatogram? A chromatogram is actually the results of the paper chromatography. And paper chromatography is a separation technique that is used to separate and identify small amounts of substances that are dissolved in a solvent. We can also use it to test the purity of a substance. Let me explain the results a little. What is this highest solvent level? If I were to compare it to a race, that's like my finishing line. Let's write this down. So, where is the start line of the race? This here, the one I've indicated with a purple arrow, that is the start line. And the start line is where I will put a tiny drop of the sample, just like the one that we see on F here. This chromatography paper is dipped into the solvent. And as the solvent moves up the paper, just like how racers run towards the finishing line, the sample here will dissolve into the solvent. If the sample is made up of two or more components, the different components will move at different speeds along together with the solvent, and they will start to separate. So, let's take a look at the results for sample E. How many spots do you see for E? There are two spots for sample E. So, this means that E is made up of two components which are separated to form two visible dots here. So, what can we say about spot X here, the one that is closer to the finishing line? Do you think it has moved faster or slower? Since it is closer to the finishing line, it has actually moved faster. This means that that component is more soluble in the solvent. So, what can you say about the spot that is further away from the finishing line, spot Y? Is it more soluble or less soluble? Since it is further away from the finishing line, it has moved slower in the solvent and is less soluble in the solvent. Let's find any other dyes which is also made up of two components. We are looking for two dots in the results. And which sample gives you that? We have sample H. So we know sample H is also made up of two components. Let's write that down. What happens if you only see one dot in the results, like in sample G? How many components is dye G made of? Since you only see one dot, this means that it is made up of only one component and it is not mixed with any other substance. What about dye F here? It is only one dot. Does that mean that it is only made up of one component? No. If you notice that the dot, it is still on the start line. Has it moved up together with the solvent? No, it has not moved up. This is similar to a runner that has not run in the race and just stayed at the start line. Since F did not move with the solvent, it is insoluble in the solvent, hence giving no results. Let's write that down. Now that we've analyzed the results of the chromatogram, let's take a look at the question. We are looking for the dye, which is a pure substance. What is a pure substance? That means that it is only made up of one component. Can it be mixed with other substances if it is pure? No, it should not be mixed with other substances. So how many dots should I see in my chromatogram? I should be looking for one dot only that has moved up the solvent. And which result shows us that there's only one component in the dye? We have dye G. Giving us the answer as option 3. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you want to check out the other videos, click on the link on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I see you next time. Bye!